What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Happy Friday or whatever day you might be watching this. So I don't know if you remember this clip from one of my most recent videos. So the reason I'm here at Petite with the Sling 4 is I just wanted to come and have a look at my plane, see how everything was going, all the test flying. And what a great way to arrive to come and see your plane is to be coming here by plane as well. And that is my radial engine <laughs> flying around there doing its test flying. Hopefully we'll get hold of that thing soon. Yes, that's me mentioning that I'm having an aircraft built with a radial engine installed. However, unfortunately that's no longer. Due to a myriad of reasons, we are unable to use that radial engine. So we've had to pull that off, uh, which is quite a sad thing, um, and put on a new engine, which is, in my opinion, a much better engine. Um, and actually it's a much better way forward. So why don't we jump into the aircraft instead of sitting around here in the office. Um, we're going to jump into a sling 2 and fly over to Petite to have a look at my new aircraft with a Rotax 915 IS engine. So we'll see you there. Alright, and isn't that better? We're inside the cockpit of an aeroplane. We're flying the sling 2 turbo today and we're on our way to go and see my aircraft. Um, as you may have seen, we've had to uh, replace the engine, which is sad in a way, um, but it opens a whole lot of new doors to new opportunities with this new engine that we're going to put in now. Uh, you would have seen in the title what type of engine it is, um, but yeah, I'm so excited. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, they've recently just built one with a 915 as well, um, and the climb rates on that thing and the short takeoff capabilities are you know, just unbelievable. Um, so yeah, follow along as we fly in the Sling 2 from Tetherfield today all the way to Petite. Uh, it's not a long flight, it's about uh, 45 nautical miles. So we should get there in about 40 or so minutes. Um, so yeah, stick around. We're just backtracking now on t uh, runway 11 now at Tetherfield and we'll do our run-ups um, and then I'll talk to you again, again once we're back in the air. Tetherfield traffic, Sierra November Gulf, entering and lining up runway 11 and we'll be straight out departure to the east routing Romeo Alpha Sierra Nevada Golf. Airspeed is alive. Air stable. Fifty knots. This thing climbs like a homesick angel. Holy shit. Excuse the language. <laughs> yeah, so we're currently in the cruise in the Sling 2 Turbo. We're just passing uh, my old airfield off to the left here. Um, that's pretty cool. And we're on our way to Romeo Alpha. We actually have to route around uh, OR Tambo's airspace, Johannesburg International's airspace, um, to get to Petite. Um, but we're currently in the cruise now. Autopilot is on. And just to give you a brief overview of this aircraft, this is a Sling 2 with a 914 turbo engine. Um, so it's nippy. It's a, it's a really interesting aircraft. Um, on climb out there, I could feel the power that this aircraft actually had. I couldn't imagine an aircraft, well, a Sling 2 with a 915. The performance that would come out of that thing would be absolutely unbelievable. Um, but yeah, with the 914, I mean, it's still amazing. We were getting over a thousand foot per minute climb. Um, we're in the cruise now with a, uh, call it about 110 knot, uh, 150 knot indicated airspeed, and a true airspeed of 125 knots. It's a two-seat aircraft. Um, you know, if, if just you and your wife, you and your mate, uh, great touring aircraft, good aircraft to build hours on. Um, yeah, I couldn't say a bad thing about the Sling 2 Turbo. To be honest, I can't say a bad thing about any of the Slings. Um, they truly are, you know, amazing aircraft. So let me just give you a story about what has actually been happening with my aircraft. When I originally started building it about a year ago, we decided we wanted to put a radial engine. Um, it was a Werner 7-cylinder radial engine. Um, and we thought this thing was going to be an absolute monster. It was 137 horsepower, continuous. Um, Obviously, the torque of a radial engine with those large bore cylinders. The thing is, um, 
there are many issues with the engine itself um, and being the type of aircraft that we wanted to put it on the prop clearance initially was our first problem um, the, the props that they make for it are two-bladed wooden props um, and this thing was like 84 inches long so prop clearance on a bad landing would have been a huge issue for that aircraft the second thing we had some issues with the oil we actually had an oil pump failure whilst we were testing it. Luckily that oil pump failure happened on the ground. We didn't damage any of the aircraft. Um, but yes, we had an oil pump failure, so that put me off even more. Um, and then just the third thing, there were it's a fuel injected motor, so it had all the modern technology, but you know, uh, the old style radial look. Um, so it was fuel injected and we actually found that this aircraft um, hadn't been calibrated, well at least the fuel injection system, the ECU, hadn't been calibrated for higher altitudes. So we had a lot of overfueling at higher altitudes. Thomas, I understand now what's going on with this engine. Um, they've mapped this thing equally up to 8,000 foot, so there's zero difference between sea level and 8,000 foot. And also the RPMs, it's just injecting the same amount of fuel all the time. Uh, causing the engine to run rough. Um, and from then on we decided, no, let's just remove this engine, it's not going to work. Um, that's more for people who want to fly around like they would ride their Harley Davidson bike on a Sunday. It's not for the type of flying that I want to do. Um, me thinking with all the modern technology that it did have on it, um, that it would be fine and absolutely great to fly around for the stuff that I want to do. Um, but in the end we actually realized that this, this uh, engine was not going to work. Um, so we decided to remove the engine. I'll put up a picture here of our aircraft without an engine. Uh, and we decided to go for a, a newer, more modern engine, um, being the Rotax 915 IS engine. Um, we found that the Rotaxes, the older Rotaxes, the 912s, the 914s, all those things fit absolutely perfectly in a, a safari or a, a bush plane like we're building now. Um, so basically we decided let's not go with one of the smaller ones, let's go with the bigger 915 engine to keep, give ourselves that same power that we could have got out of that radial engine. Uh, so with the Rotax 915 we've actually got uh, 141 uh, rated horsepower for takeoff and I believe it's 135 um, but the best thing about it is that it is turbocharged. Uh, all the ECU systems, the backup that Rotax provides is um, you know, quite a lot better than the, the previous engine that we tried with. Um, so I'm glad we made that decision. It was quite a lot more expensive, which is <laughs> quite bad for us, um, but hopefully it proves itself and becomes worth that money. We also had to upgrade the prop as well, um, because the Rotax 915s, as you guys may know, uh, well, they have a hydraulic component to them, um, so we needed to put on a hydraulic prop. You can put on electric props, um, but we feel the hydraulic prop was quite a lot better for us. Um, so we put on a, a, a hydraulic prop, um, but that obviously means you need uh, adjustable or variable pitch propellers. Um, so we needed to change the propellers, we needed a new hub, um, all that sort of stuff. And all that pricing does add up in the end, but hopefully it is worth it. So yeah, it would be fun to go and see it now. I haven't seen the aircraft since it had its uh, engine upgrade. Um, so they're still fitting the engine, but it's the first time I'll see my plane with this engine on, so it's quite exciting. Um, and I'll take you guys along as well. Yeah, so 
we've just arrived at Petit Airfield and we're going to pull in and go and have a look at our new Rotax 915 on our KFA Safari. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy watching the rest of this video where we film the new KFA Safari. Okay, so I've had to move outside of the hangar. Um, there wasn't really an opportunity to film and speak inside there. It was really loud. All the guys were working on the other aircraft. Um, obviously a lot of noise going on inside there, which isn't so great for filming. Um, so I've moved outside here and I'm just super excited for that aircraft to be finished. They're making the cowls now. Um, should be painted probably by the end of this week. Um, so yeah. Very exciting times, hopefully we're in that aircraft within about a month's time. Um, if Rotax can supply a fuel pump, apparently they've recalled all fuel pumps and basically we need to wait now until they've tested some new fuel pumps. Seems like they're going get, to be getting some from Andair, um, but yeah, that's the waiting game now with Rotax until they can sort out their fuel pump issue. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did um, hit that like button down below uh, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you guys on the next video thanks for watching